Hey, what's up, everyone? Today, I'm going to talk about a pretty controversial topic in the SEO space, which is the helpful content update and the helpful content system, which Google has now incorporated into its core ranking systems. So this is a very controversial topic because this is a, an update and a ranking system that has affected so many different websites and site owners, especially in the last year. So we had the notorious September 2023 helpful content update. And for anybody who's unfamiliar, that was part of a new ranking system that Google introduced in 2022. Um, I actually wrote about it the day it was introduced. It was Google's new helpful content system. And at the time that it was introduced, we actually thought that it was going to be much more impactful than it was. So it kind of flew under the radar for a lot of sites. In fact, a lot of the sites that were hit negatively last year actually saw increases during that time. So I think Google was still figuring out exactly what the helpful content system was going to do. And it's no secret at this point that the September 2023 helpful content update was a bit of a bloodbath for many, many different sites. Um, I want to talk about it today because my team and I have been pretty obsessed with this update. We've been we've been researching it. We've been working with dozens of affected websites. I've been paying very close attention to sites that are impacted by this update. And I want to share what I know and what I've found. Um, I will start by saying, I understand this is a very emotional topic for a lot of people. Uh, I'm very sensitive to that. I've worked very closely and spoken to a lot of the different affected site owners. And I do understand that pretty much almost everyone that I've spoken to, all the clients that we've worked with who have been affected by the helpful content update have lost a lot uh, of traffic and revenue and, and in some cases their livelihood and had to lay people off and things like this. So I understand this is a very uh, emotional and sensitive subject. So I wanna start by saying, I don't mean anything that I'm gonna talk about today as any type of uh, personal attack or judgment on anybody. I know that in fact, I think many if not most of the people who were affected by this update had really no idea. And a lot of people could never have seen this coming. Um, I think those of us that work specifically looking at Google algorithms and penalties for, for many years, I did find myself uh, over the last few years warning a lot of site owners against some of the tactics that it seems like Google is going against with this type of update. Um, but frankly, there's a lot of uh, SEOs out there and marketers and site owners who probably thought they were doing everything right because Google was rewarding them with lots of traffic. So I understand that it feels very blindsiding to lose everything overnight with seemingly little warning. So that is, in fact, something that is happening. I think that there's many site owners who found themselves in a situation where they thought they were doing everything right. You know, they were following Google's guidelines. They were following, let's call it uh, white hat marketing advice and uh, ended up in a situation where they are now, you know, seeing 80 or 90 plus percent declines in traffic and visibility. So I'm sensitive to that. And I do want to talk about just a lot of the patterns that I've seen over the last several months of looking really closely at the impacts and to this day, speaking with site owners that were affected by this. So that's my experience. Um, let's talk a little bit about what happened recently. So we're currently in the midst of the March core update. I just did a video about that. Uh, if you read Google's documentation about this update, it's a little sneaky, but they did kind of quietly consolidate what was previously the helpful content ranking system into the core ranking system. So what does that mean? It means that we're not gonna get new helpful content updates. We're not gonna get, all right, today is the day when the helpful content system has been updated and everybody that's been impacted can go check their traffic and know specifically if that's what's impacting their sites or not. We used to have that, we're not gonna have that anymore. So if anything, you're going to see those big algorithmic impacts that you often see during big Google updates. Those are gonna probably happen during core updates, but the helpful content, uh, what was previously the helpful content system is different because it uses this machine learning classifier to apply a negative classifier on affected sites that can supposedly be lifted at any point outside of an algorithm update. So there's a lot there. Uh, that basically means that there's not going to be a lot of clear indication from Google if your website's been impacted by this, especially going forward. You're not gonna get that clear date. It's not gonna be September 17th, 2023. It's gonna, gonna potentially be any day, but I would, I would imagine I'm, and, and I am anticipating that we're still only a week into what is probably going to be a four week March core update. I think that we're probably not seeing the biggest impacts for the sites that were previously affected by the helpful content update just yet. That's just my theory. I've been looking at the numbers. This is pretty well known in our space at the moment. I mean, today it's what March 14th, 2024. 
there are no big success stories or case studies to my knowledge of sites that have had their helpful content update classifier lifted. They've seen a significant recovery. Correct me if I'm wrong, feel free to share your stories. But from what I've seen, from what I've spoken to others about, there are little to none. And the ones that I've seen, because I have dug into the ones that seem like, oh, maybe this is a recovery. I don't think it's truly a recovery from the classifier being applied to those sites. So we'll wait and see over the next couple of weeks how that pans out, because it's possible that we will start to see some movement among the affected sites. But unfortunately, many of the sites that were hit by the September helpful content update are either flat or in some cases down as of the first week of the March core update. So not super promising, but we still have a while to go. And I do think we're probably going to start to see some tremors, hopefully positive for many of these sites over the next few weeks. Now, what are some of the big patterns that I've noticed as I've worked with sites that have been affected by these updates. Um, you know, working with, at this point, dozens of affected websites for the helpful content updates specifically, the patterns become abundantly clear. The patterns are actually pretty clear to me from the get-go because generally speaking, these sites are all kind of similar. Now, I, I know if you're working on one, you know, if you have a site about uh, best barbecue grills and that's your niche, you might say, well, my site's completely different from the site that's writing about men's hairstyle advice. But at the end of the day, if you look at the templates, if you look at the way the sites are structured, if you look at the use of SEO throughout the site, if you look at the use of affiliate links, the ad networks, all these things that you can kind of like strip the site down and look at it as the sum of its parts, they're very similar sites. They're just about different topics. Now multiply that by all the different niches and all the different topics that people might be writing about or buying domains and publishing a lot of content in those areas, the sites kind of look the same to Google, I'm sorry to say. And I know that different levels of automation were used in the content creation process. I know that people have all kinds of different bells and whistles that make the sites feel a little bit different, or maybe some are higher quality, some are low, lower quality, some use real experts, some don't, some have authors, some don't. There's all these different things that like, when you look at the sites one by one, they might feel different. But really when you take a step back and you look at dozens or hundreds of these sites, they are generally very similar. So some of the things that I've noticed, these are generally content websites that make money through ads and affiliate links. That's just true across the board. Uh, whenever I'm analyzing a site and I'm trying to see if it was the helpful content update that hit the site, because unfortunately there were several major Google updates that happened in 2023 around the same time. So sometimes it can be a bit confusing. Like you think that you were hit by the helpful content update, but really you were hit by, for example, the October core update. They were close together. But when I see, when I'm doing that analysis and I see that uh, the site is, let's say, like e-commerce or um, I don't know, a news website, it's possible that those sites were affected. But really, generally speaking, the majority of what I'm seeing are content niche publisher websites that uh, have a lot of ads and a lot of affiliate links. And in, all, in many cases, a lot of best of top 10 best X product, a lot of that type of content. They generally over-index on that type of content. Beyond that, it feels like a lot of these site owners were getting their SEO advice from the same place or same places. Um, I've spoken to a number of them. In some cases, I talked to them about where did they learn this? Who are they following? Um, did they buy links? Where did the links come from? Believe it or not, a lot of site owners answered in the same ways. They are getting their advice from the same places. Now, this is not to say that those are not good places to get advice. I think actually a lot of them are getting advice from reputable SEO publications. The difference is that Google needed to create a system to devalue sites that are too SEO forward. They are sites that found essentially loopholes on Google or are uh, exploiting opportunities on Google to make a lot of money off of ways that many different Google searchers are searching for information. And they went a bit too far with just capitalizing on opportunities to make money online without adding real value to Google searchers. Now, that's Google's perspective, okay? I'm not saying that's my perspective. I'm saying that's why Google had to do this. Do I think that Google went a bit too far? Yes, I actually do. Um, I've seen, I wanna say maybe five or 10 examples of sites that were hit brutally, like lost 70, 80, 90% of their traffic. And I don't think that was justified at all. And I don't think those sites could have seen it coming. 
And I also think that those sites, actually, when you look at Google's guidance for site owners, they're very closely aligned. So I do think that niche bloggers, generally speaking, were at a huge disadvantage, even the ones that were actually really closely following Google's guidelines. So it's very tricky. And um, if you're a site that has a, another, you know, a, a core product or you sell products online or you have some type of other offering above and beyond just offering affiliate content, you're at an advantage when it comes to this type of update, just based on what I've seen. So uh, the sites are almost always doing the same thing, which is that they are in a niche and they then find all the different ways that people are searching for things in that niche, right? SEO, keyword research. And they're trying to have one page per thing that people search for. So this is generally speaking, like what we try to do in the SEO space. I think the issue is that too many site owners were doing it on similar topics. And now we have thousands and thousands of business owners taking the same SEO advice, finding the same keyword research opportunities with the same SEO tools that tell you, you know, if you're going to write about a uh, funny quote, you have span to make, you know, you could get a million clicks per month or whatever the numbers are. And now you have a thousand people writing about funny quotes, right? Google can't serve all these websites. So if you're all saying the same thing with a bunch of ads and a, fun a bunch of affiliate links, Google had to kind of like thin out the number of sites that are all competing for these same keywords. Now, the ones that are doing this in a way that is not the most valuable, helpful content. And I know that's very hard to assess when it's your own content, but compare yourself to the thousands of other people that are doing the exact same thing. It becomes very tri tricky for Google to do this algorithmically to say, okay, if a trillion people or a billion people or whatever it is have pages that are the hundred funniest quotes in 2023 or 2024, which is the best one? Because guess what? Most of them have the exact same quotes and most of them have stock photography, and most of them have the same affiliate links, and most of them have the same ad networks. How is Google supposed to choose who gets to be number one or two or three? It's really tricky. And so I know that when this is your content, and like I, I truly do understand, if you built this thing, it's really frustrating to be told this is not helpful. It's really frustrating to be told like your content is not great for users because you had all these other signals, and maybe you still have all these other signals that people really enjoy it. The problem is there's just too many people doing it now. There's too many players in the game and Google had to take really serious action. And again, I, I do personally think they went a little bit too far. I don't know what they're going to do with this update. I do think that as the core update rolls out over the next couple of weeks, I'm hopeful, especially for the site owners, including some of the companies that we've worked with who have made bold changes to their site. They've maybe deleted a lot of unhelpful content. They've found uh, issues or opportunities and taken action on those. I do hope and anticipate that we'll see some recoveries. I think that we'll probably see that over the next couple of weeks, but remember that this is a punitive update. I think Glenn Gabe wrote an article about this recently. That's a perfect word for it. It's punitive. The helpful content was update was made to punish site owners for doing too much SEO content. That's what it was in one sentence. Uh, other algorithm updates like core updates can result in lots of winners, right? We can see lots of sites that have explosive growth. And we're starting to see this now with the March core update. This site, one of the sites that I'm working on, 100% growth and traffic overnight, right? Uh, that can happen. That didn't happen with the helpful content update in September because it wasn't structured that way. It wasn't meant to work that way. The helpful content system or what was previously the helpful content system because it doesn't exist anymore, fun fact. It was made to apply a classifier to sites that were doing things wrong. So you will see sites go down as that classifier is applied. The only way that you'll see a lot of sites get more traffic or more visibility or more rankings is because they're earning the positions that were lost by sites that were dinged during that update. So that's not going to result in the type of exponential growth that you can see during other types of Google updates. Um, so it's punitive. And when you're affected by a punitive update, unfortunately, it puts it in, you in a much uh, a harder position to be able to get that traffic back. I hate to say it. Uh, it's not exactly a manual action like what we're seeing sent out because with manual actions, Google will say, our web spam team is on to you and you broke the rules. This is different. This is an algorithmic action that's been applied to your site. And remember that the helpful content system was using machine learning. This is something that I always talk to people about because the more signals that your site has that match the signals that Google trained its systems on to say, this is the most unhelpful content, 
the more your site looks like th that training set of extremely unhelpful sites, whatever that set is, I don't know what it is, but I have a, a good idea. <laughs> and at this point, you could probably look at the sites that were penalized for pure spam because they're very, very similar to what I imagine Google trained its systems to look for with unhelpful content. The more signals that your site has that matches those sites, the more unhelpful your site is deemed to be. This is why when you have mediocre content, when you have some good content, but some bad content, there's a threshold, right? If it's 60% unhelpful, maybe you'll feel 60% of the impact. If it's 30% unhelpful, it's 30% of the impact. This is quite literally how Google told us that this is going to work. So what you need to do right now, if you've been affected by the helpful content update, and hopefully you've been doing this because we've had a number of months to work on this, is to try to identify with data and with speaking to your users and with doing any type of UX studies or research or speaking to your audience or hiring a consultant to look at it with a second set of eyes or whatever it is, identifying what that unhelpful content is. And the numbers generally speak for themselves. The stuff that dropped off the most in Search Console and Google Analytics, sometimes these pages were even removed from Google's index because they didn't even meet Google's initial criteria for indexation or for indexing because they were not high quality enough. Um, address those. And I was just speaking to a number of companies today. Luckily, Google gave us the no index tag, right? So I understand, I hate to be the one to be like, yeah, go delete all your content. I hate, I don't even wanna say that. It's, it's not, it feels very unfair, especially when writers have actually put some level of effort and energy into this content. Like I would hate to tell people to go delete everything you've written, it sucks. Um, but luckily we have no index tags. No index tag is the first step that you can take towards saying, you know what, Google, I am owning up to the fact that this content is not super high quality, or maybe I just wanna take quick action to remove it from Google's index. I wanna remove it from consideration. I want to take the best performing content on my site and give put my best foot forward and let Google crawl and index and, and analyze that content. And I wanna remove this other content via no index from the index, maybe work on improving it. Maybe you choose to delete it. Maybe you choose to 301 redirect it, but we're taking action with that. That's a bold move that you can take now for, for pages that you believe are unhelpful for users. That puts your best foot forward with other content. And it doesn't, it doesn't require deleting that content. You don't have to tell your content writer, we're, we're accessing all the stuff you've written, but you can at least no index it. And then what's nice about no index, is theoretically, if you did want to send people to those pages via email, social media, for whatever reason, if the author wants to point to the stuff that they've written, it's still there. It's just not indexed on search engines. So that's one thing you can do. Um, Google literally says they have a brand new uh, helpful content FAQ where basically one of the questions is like, does removing uh, unhelpful content help? And in so many words, Google says, yes. <laughs> that's something you can do to get, to address being impacted by this update is you can remove offending content and the rest of your content is what they'll consider. So think about no index. Um, if, if it's egregious enough, I've also been talking to a lot of companies where they, they wrote about topics that were very much outside of their wheelhouse. And in, in some cases, in more extreme cases, they wrote about topics that are problematic or dangerous or risky. Google talks about your money, your life uh, quite often in the search quality guidelines and in other places. If you're publishing content on something that's deemed as your money, your life, so anything that can affect a user's safety, security, financial well-being, their health. Um, like family issues, psychology issues. And I've seen a whole lot of the sites that were hit by the helpful content update. They were publishing a lot of topic in their niche, but then they kind of ventured out into this other area where you really want to have a doctor involved or you really want to have a psychologist involved before you're making bold claims about uh, 10 things to know if you have blah, blah, blah syndrome. Like you got to be careful with that. And I do think that there's certain flags that Google has to say like, whoa, they're getting into an area that's very much outside their wheelhouse. So if you have super egregious content, you might want to take more bold action than just no indexing. But all of this starts with getting inventory of your site and its content and how it's performing and what, have see, what, what content has seen the biggest decline, their declines in the last few months. I think that's a big clue for what might be some of the most offending content. But remember this works on a threshold level. So if you can get your site in a place where you've removed the vast majority of the offending content and you really truly believe that the content that's left is helpful quality content, according to Google, hopefully the classifier will be lifted. Now, everyone's getting very antsy and very frustrated because it's been a number of months since September, now we're in March, and we haven't seen any significant movement. This is not uncommon for Google updates. Uh, my team and I have worked on helping sites recover. This is 
my history in the SEO space, I've been doing this for a while. I would unfortunately say that it's not going to be less than six months. You know, assuming that you're doing a lot of hard work, it might be more like a year if I was going to really kind of generalize what I've seen. And that's assuming you're doing a lot of hard work. So a lot of sites are sitting around currently saying this isn't fair, this isn't fair, but they're not doing anything. That's not the right approach. If you want to save your site, you need to be doing bold, bold, bold action. You need to be hitting the ground running, fixing as many things as possible because every moment counts. It's going to take Google a long time to process the changes that you make. And they quite literally say that. So the sooner you can get to work doing this really big, bold moves that are required to, to fix your site, the faster Google can start to process those changes. So hopefully you're already getting to work. And these are not small changes. This is not like, I added an author name to 15 articles. You know what I mean? Like this is like, you have to move away from the patterns of those super, super unhelpful sites and move towards the sites that Google considers helpful. And I think we know which ones those are. So hopefully that was helpful, no pun intended. And uh, I'm open to questions. I know this is a really complicated and and controversial and challenging update. And I know a lot of people are, are really kind of panicked and freaking out, but I, I wanted to share this video because I've been looking at a lot of sites and the patterns are becoming pretty clear to me. So feel free to ask any questions in the comments and I will speak to you all soon. Bye.